Yeah. It's lovely to have you back out here. You and Rosie are friends. You know each other. We're yes, we friends. are friends. We were on the ill fated, I don't know, season whatever of The View. And yeah. Donald Trump is our through line. So he came out and, you know, she was supposed to fight with me. And she said, he's a racist. And I was like, mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, he's terrible. I was like, mm hmm. <laughs> and that was it. We both got fired. <laughs> right? Yes, pretty yeah. much. Uh, I want to ask about, uh, there's so many things I want to ask you about. But uh, the shutdown, it seems like everyone is in agreement pretty much. There's some maybe some far right holdouts that Trump won this game, but everybody seems to agree that Nancy Pelosi played this perfectly. What do you think is the fallout from this for the president? Well, the fallout is those far right holdouts are calling us, you know, from block members saying, yeah, he lost. I mean, the holdout is even the wackiest part of his base thinks he's a giant loser for this whole uh -huh. paper. <laughs> you think, no, seriously. And it's not because they disagree about the wall. They just think that strategically he failed. They think that he was owned publicly and privately by Nancy Pelosi. And it's sort of an insider point, but it was his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who ran point on this. And they think he's not up for the task of running legislative affairs for the White House. There seemed, it seemed at every level to know exactly what to do. Was the taking away of the State of the Union, was taking away something that ceremonial from the president, uh, a stroke of genius from, Look, from Nancy? It's a mistake to project onto him more sophistication than exists. And for, <laughs> but, but for him, taking away airtime, taking away the thing that we all recognize from the movies and whatnot about being president, standing there with the people behind you clapping or booing or whatever they're doing, that to him, those are some of the most... Um, sort of powerful and precious things to him about being president. So to take that away really did sort of cut, cut all of his leverage. And of course, it's happening on the same day that he capitulates there. Uh, Roger Stone is indicted. You, uh, you traveled in Republican circles when he was in those circles as well, Roger Stone. What was your take on Roger Stone? I mean, he was at a firm that was so dirty. You just, you just knew that if no one else would hire a bad dictator, like, oh, well, that firm will do it. It was Stone Manafort, who's awaiting sentencing for his felonies. And, you know, the idea that, that we're all supposed to believe, Chris Christie was on my show today, and I said, you know, everyone around the president has either been convicted or is, or is awaiting trial for the crime of lying about Russia. Is that a coincidence? Oh, it might be a coincidence. I mean, everyone that the president surrounded himself with was, is either a convicted felon or has been charged with a felony. You talked to Chris Christie today, and it was a very long, uh, talked to him for about 40 minutes, and it was a fascinating <laughs> interview. I don't think it was that long. Was no, it? I was, but again, I, I wanted to He's hear sweating. you interview him, but... <laughs> You know, he wrote this book, and yeah. it seems to be a thing that a lot of people leave the Trump administration, and then they take this one shot at sort of reframing their experience because they are now trying to, you know, re-enter polite this society. <laughs> Do you think Chris Christie will be effective with this book, with his take on what has happened inside that White House? I think Chris Christie is like Donald Trump in that people know what they think about him. And if you're from New Jersey, you know, he left with some of the lowest approval ratings in that state's history. But I think if you're in the Republican Party and you see a lot of people were into Trump, Chris Christie has some of that bluntness without you know, all of the criminality that seems to follow. Yeah. Well, Trump. I do think something that's similar with the two of them is they, the people were charmed by their authenticity. You know, and, and again, you know, it was no small thing that Chris Christie was a, a governor, a, you know, Republican governor in New Jersey. Yeah, and, and look, Chris Christie has genuine friendships on the other side of the aisle. And I, I don't want to name any of them. They may be in witness protection at this point. But, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, he, he did. I got the go, kind of friends he, he, that don't like the world knowing. <laughs> no, no, but he, he had, and, and he has obvious political talents. The, the challenge I think he'll have with the book is he savages Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law. He spares nothing, and, and Kushner deserves it. Savages Bannon. <laughs> Bannon deserves it. I said this to him on TV, so I don't feel like I'm talking about him behind his back on TV, but he, he doesn't lay a glove, really, on the president, and the president puts those incompetent and seemingly corrupt people in very powerful places. Yeah, I just, I guess that's the disconnect, is how can you say it's not the president's fault he's surrounded by, you know, sort of uh, liars and idiots, because yeah. that seems and to felons. be... Like a pretty right. important part of the job is right. who you bring in to the White House with you. He, the president has surround. There weren't any qualifications to work on the Trump campaign. You didn't really have to know how to do anything political. Yeah. But you had to know Russians, like Russians, and then lie about what you did with them. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a weird thing to have. That's a. <laughs>
I had you. I had that in special skills on the resume. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Maybe it was like, yeah.